Perhaps you've run into a situation where you've got to paint some very tiny, intricate details. And in this case, we have to paint these tiny tree branches here. And these are super tiny and uh, definitely falls under the category of intricate details. Now, of course, this process can be a little bit scary, especially when you're working with an opaque medium like acrylics, where you're working from the background to the foreground where you've already developed the background and you've got to make these marks over the top of the background. So, of course, there's a little bit of fear there that you're going to mess up or drop the paintbrush or something catastrophic like that. Um, and you have to kind of get through that fear, but creating these little tiny intricate details might be a little bit easier than you might think. It's all about understanding how to use the paint correctly, choosing the right brush type and size, and also working on a surface that's appropriate for this kind of detail work. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. I'm going to share a few tips with you for painting intricate details like this with acrylics. Now, of course, this painting that we're talking about here, we're in mid-process. This is from a live lesson series that we're currently in the middle of, which is available to members at thevirtualinstructor.com. Each week we uh, stream live for an hour each week as we uh, develop a painting or a drawing from start to finish. And right now we're in the middle of the process and we're to the point where we're painting these intricate tree branches. Now, in this image, I've already completed that process, but in just a few minutes, I'm going to share with you the process that I went through to create these branches. But these branches are super, super tiny, of course. And to give you a little bit of context, I'll throw a little quarter on the painting so you can make a little bit of a comparison of just how tiny these tree branches are. Now, this might be intimidating to some and it might seem difficult to others, but I'm going to show you in just a minute that this process is not quite as difficult as you may think. Let's first consider a few of the factors that are going to allow us to create these small intricate details, these small branches on these trees. First of all, we need to consider the surface. Now, in this case, we're working on gessoed masonite, which is quite a bit smoother than traditional canvas. Now, you can still create this effect on canvas. It's just a little bit more difficult to achieve. So a smoother surface is definitely going to be better for creating small intricate details like these. The second factor we need to consider, of course, is the brush type and the brush size. Now, in this case, I'm painting these small branches using a round brush, and it is a small round brush, but it's not the smallest round brush that I have at my disposal. So you don't always have to use the smallest brush, the smallest brush that you have. You just have to have a high level of control over the brush you're using. And as you'll see in a minute, we can create these small, tiny branches with even a slightly larger round brush. And then, of course, the third factor we need to consider is the viscosity of the paint. Now, viscosity refers to the fluidity of the paint. And most heavy body acrylics, like the ones we're using here, are very, very thick. So we need to thin the paint down with a bit of water. But it's all about finding a balance between the amount of water that we use and keeping the paint opaque enough so that we can see the marks that we make when we apply the paint to the surface. So we're going to need to find a balance in our viscosity where the paint is fluid enough to be evenly spread, but also opaque enough so that we don't see through it and we can actually see the color that we're applying. Now let's take a look at our painting in progress. As you can see here, we've already defined the basic structure of the skeleton of the two trees here, and we've already started the process of adding some of the smaller branches here. Now let's take a look at the two brushes I have at my disposal. I, you can see here I have a very, very tiny round brush, and I also have one that's a little bit larger, but still fairly small. And I found that I actually have more control over the slightly larger round brush. Now, this might be different for you, but we're going to use the slightly larger round brush instead of the super tiny one. And I think this is because the slightly larger round brush holds a little bit more paint and makes it a little bit easier to spread the paint and also taper the strokes. But more on that in a moment. 
So here's a look at the palette that I'm working with. And for the most part, we're going to be using a combination of burnt umber here, where I'm pulling some of the color down, and also a bit of Payne's gray, which is at the bottom. It may look like it's black, but it's actually a very dark, cool gray. And we're also going to add just a touch of dioxazine purple to give it a little bit of color. We don't want it to be overly neutral here. We just want a slight bit of color added. Now, this is where we're going to adjust the viscosity. Once we've got our initial color mix, up. We're going to start adding water to the mixture. And of course, the more water we add, the more viscous the paint becomes. But if we add too much water, the acrylic paint will lose its adhesion properties and actually won't even stick to the surface and it will become too translucent. So we really need to find a balance between the, the amount of color that we're applying and also the fluidity or viscosity of the paint. Okay, so once we've got a good consistency in the paint, uh, as far as the viscosity and the opaqueness of the paint, or the translucency of the paint, we can go ahead and start making marks. And in this case, I'm just going to pull strokes out from the medium to larger branches and the trunk of the tree, and allow these strokes to taper as I pull the strokes outward. Now, you'll notice a couple things here as I'm pulling these strokes out. I'm trying to make these marks with a deliberate stroke, so I'm not scrolling. In other words, I'm trying not to go back and forth with the brush strokes. When I'm pulling the branches out, I'm trying to pull the brush stroke in one deliberate stroke and allow those brush strokes to taper or get smaller closer to the end of the stroke. Another thing you'll notice is that we're pulling strokes outward from the tree or basically the way the tree grows. So we will pull the strokes up for the trunk and the larger branches and then we're pulling them outward. So we're basically making strokes as the tree grows, pulling it up from the ground up. And that will help to create a more natural look and it will also help with that tapering that you need to have happen when you're creating these small little branches. Now, of course, another thing to consider here is the marks that we're making uh, for each one of these branches. It, and a tree is an organic object, and of course, tree branches grow in an organic way. This means that we can't really take an approach where we're just making the same lines over and over again. We need to allow them to bend and change direction in somewhat unexpected ways in order to create an illusion of a naturally growing tree branch. Now you can see with my first application here, it was rather light, so you can always go back with a slightly thicker application and create some areas that are slightly darker. So here's a look at the photo reference that I'm working from, and this photo reference has been manipulated a little bit in Photoshop so that it's proportional to the surface that I'm working on. Now if we'll look at the trees that are in this image, primarily on the right side, the two larger trees that are in the middle ground, you'll notice how concentrated all of those small branches are. They almost form solid areas of color. Now if we were going to attempt to do this in our painting, it may be quite overwhelming and it may not translate very well. But uh, the tendency of most people is to put too few branches. So instead of painting every branch, they put too few of, of the branches that they need to to really create an image that translates well. So basically what we need to do is we need to find a balance between painting every single branch and of course painting enough branches so that it translates well and it makes sense for our painting. So this is another tip for you. Uh, if you're painting a tree that is void of leaves like we have here, don't paint every single branch. But also, in many circumstances, you might need to paint more branches than you actually think you need to. So we'll continue on here painting some of the branches close to the end or the outer edges of the tree. And you'll notice that in most circumstances, you're going to have a heavier concentration of smaller branches out towards the outer edge of the tree. And that's what we're going to mimic here in the painting. And of course, these are super tiny, super small marks, and they're somewhat translucent, but there's enough pigment on the surface so that it's given the impression of these small branches. And of course, they should overlap each 
each other. Um, but we still want to allow some of the sky to show through, especially in this painting, because the contrast between the white of the clouds and the brilliant blue is really nice and working well for this particular painting. So we, we don't want to cover everything up, but we want to have those small branches, but we want to have enough of them so that they look believable, but not so many that they become solid areas of color. Now, of course, this process does require patience, and too often these days, people want fast solutions for just about anything. <laughs> and in this case, uh, there's just not a fast solution. You just have to take your time, pay attention to the details, work slowly and deliberately with a, a little bit of a level of confidence, of course, since we're making these marks over the top of a finished background. If you do make a mistake, it, it's fixable, but it's going to be difficult to fix. So, it pays to just work slowly and deliberately and be patient during this process and slowly allow your tree to come to life, uh, so to speak, and take a few minutes and step back from your painting during the painting process, especially when it becomes a little bit too tedious. And you also shouldn't feel like you have to have a super steady hand to do this either, especially with the branches. A little bit of wiggle just adds a little bit more of that organic quality to each one of the branches. Now, of course, with any painting or drawing that you create, you are the artist. You don't have to copy exactly what you see. You can choose how many of the branches you want to include or how few of the branches you want to include. Uh, it's totally up to you. And during the painting process, I'm using the photo reference as a reference, but I'm definitely not copying every single branch or shape of the tree trunk exactly the way that I see them. I'm allowing myself to be a little bit more free with the marks that I'm making and trying to make marks that work for this painting because that's what ultimately it's all about. It's about the finished painting that you create, not how well you copied a photo reference or um, an object that you might be painting or drawing from life. Now, of course, this painting is still in progress and our trees aren't quite finished even still. We'll need to go back and add some highlights and shadows, mainly to the larger branches and the trunk of the tree. And of course, that will go a long way into creating a little bit more form and creating a little bit more of a realistic appearance here. But for the most part, our branches are coming together at this point. And just to recap, you need to make sure that your paint is viscous enough so that you can apply it and it's opaque enough so that you can see the marks that you're making of course you need to use a smaller brush but perhaps not the smallest brush you have at your disposal you need to take your time pull strokes as the tree grows try to make deliberate strokes as you do so and feel free to deviate from your photo reference after all you are the artist the art you create is uniquely yours if you enjoyed this video, then I know you'll love being a member at thevirtualinstructor.com. Our members have access to all of our drawing and painting courses on a variety of subjects and techniques. Each one of our video modules includes a downloadable illustrated ebook that goes along with the video. We also have weekly live lessons. All of these lessons are streamed for an hour each week on a variety of subjects and mediums, and they're recorded and stored in our, our library, our vault of uh, recorded live lessons from the past. So uh, the program just continues to grow week by week. There's also the weekly critiques, which are part of the Members Minute, where you can learn by analyzing the artworks of others. There's a year-long lesson plan for visual arts teachers that includes lesson plans, video resources, handouts, and much, much more. There's just so much involved in our unique membership program. So if you're interested in learning how to take your drawings and paintings to another level, I suggest you check out the program. Everybody starts with a trial so you can go in and check everything out risk-free. Thank you so much for watching this video and I wish you all the best in your artistic success.